Welcome to episode 206 of Build Your House Yourself University by HiU. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can communicate more effectively with our contractors and build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. In the last episode, we began a mini lesson on range hoods, also called vent hoods and exhaust hoods. We talked about how we should properly size and position the hood and what amount of power we'll need. And I strongly recommended that if at all possible, you should choose a ducted system that takes stale air outdoors. In this week's episode, we'll talk more about vent hoods and how we can make them quieter. As I told you a couple of weeks ago, the range hood can really shape our experience in and around the kitchen, for better or worse. If you don't choose an exhaust hood that's the right size and power for your stove, you'll be hot and your hair, clothing, and adjoining rooms will smell like whatever you cooked. Ever go to a restaurant and leave reeking of food odors? I hate that. That's because the restaurant didn't have proper ventilation. So we definitely want our kitchens to have strong vent hoods. But as you probably know, a strong vent hood can be annoyingly loud. So this week we'll discuss what we can do to make our vent hoods less obnoxious so we can make them as quiet as possible. Before we move into the mini lesson, I want to give a shout out to Meanwhile in Indiana for our latest Apple Podcasts five-star rating and review. You said that you feel like the podcast has saved you hours and hours of time. I am so happy about that. That's the whole point of the show, to share the information I found about home building so that you can hopefully save time and effort. I'm really glad that the podcast has helped you. Thank you for giving back to the show by writing such a nice review. Okay, moving on to the mini lesson. The bulk of our lesson will cover tips that we can use to help make our vent hoods quieter. But let's start by going over the different mounting styles for ducted exhaust hoods. Remember, ducted hoods take stale air outdoors, and that's what we want. Ducted vent hood mounting styles include under cabinet, built-in inserts, wall mount chimney hoods, island hoods, and downdraft hoods. I'll tell you about each of them, but you can take a look at the show notes now for a reference if you'd like to see an image of each. Number one, under cabinet hoods. Under cabinet hoods are the most common type of range hood. They're designed to be installed under an upper cabinet without the hood itself intruding into the cabinet space above it. The attached ductwork typically runs along the adjoining wall, although occasionally, when wall space is not available, the ductwork can sit inside the cabinetry. Under cabinet hoods are among the least expensive hood types, but they have some disadvantages. Because they have to fit under a cabinet and they can intrude into the cabinet space above them, their sizes are limited. That also means limited blower power and duct size, so their suction power and performance may not be as great as you need them to be for your cooking habits and range size. Number two. Insert or built-in hoods. Insert or built-in hoods are range hoods designed to be installed into and hidden inside cabinetry or a custom-built enclosure. An insert is basically the mechanical guts of an exhaust system, and you put it inside a decorative hood cover. Those big, beautiful focal point range hoods that you see on Pinterest and House, they typically have built-in inserts inside those custom-made enclosures. The custom enclosures can be made of wood, plaster, copper, stainless steel, brass, or other materials. You can also use an insert hood if you want to completely disguise your vent hood as upper cabinets. The insert fits inside the cabinet space rather than squeezing under the cabinet like an under-cabinet hood does. Because the insert sits within the cabinet space, or a custom enclosure, Its blower size and duct size aren't limited like they are with under cabinet hoods. As a result, the performance of quality insert hoods is excellent. Number three, wall mount chimney hoods. Wall mount chimney hoods are attached to the wall. 
There are those hoods with a horizontal canopy at the bottom and a vertical vent or flue extending upward. The hood's exposed vertical vent is sometimes called a wall chimney. Typically, wall-mounted chimney hoods are installed in kitchens where there is no upper cabinetry above the range or cooktop. They come in a variety of sizes and powers and perform well. Number four, island hoods. Island hoods attach to the ceiling and are suspended over a stove in a kitchen island. Island hoods don't have a wall or cabinets alongside them to help funnel fumes into the hood. So island hoods should be wider than the cooking surface and more powerful than hoods adjacent to walls. Number five, downdraft hoods. Downdraft hoods fit into the counter next to the cooktop. They're hidden until they're needed, and then they pop up with a touch of a button. Downdraft hoods pull air across the cooktop or range horizontally, and then down into ducts running beneath the floor. They can be used anywhere in the kitchen, but downdraft hoods are mainly used with kitchen island cooktops where it might not be possible to route ductwork through the ceiling. Many professionals say, and Consumer Reports testing confirms, that downdraft hoods are among the least effective at removing cooking fumes. That's because cooking fumes like steam and smoke naturally rise, and it's easier to catch those fumes as they're headed upward rather than trying to redirect and collect those fumes from the side of the stove. Downdraft hoods are not the optimal choice for any kitchen, but they are an especially bad choice if you're considering a gas range. If you have to use a downdraft hood, stick with an electric or induction stove. So those were the mounting styles for ducted hoods. Under cabinet, insert or built-in, wall chimney hoods, island hoods, and downdraft hoods. All right, let's move into our discussion about some of the most important and overlooked features to consider when choosing a vent hood, features that contribute to the vent hood's quietness. Now, don't get me wrong, we can't completely avoid the noise of a vent hood, especially when it's on a high setting. On high, all vent hoods make noise. But the goal is to understand the features that will minimize the amount of noise that comes from the vent hood. That way, they're not so annoyingly loud that we avoid turning them on. We can minimize the noise of a vent hood in two main ways. Number one, by making the vent hood work more effectively at a lower setting, allowing us to avoid the loud high setting most of the time. And the second thing we can do is to install the hood in ways and with things that decrease the overall noise of the vent hood on all settings. So here's a list of tips that we can use to decrease the noise of our vent hoods. Number one, choose a range hood that's six inches wider than your stovetop. I mentioned this in part one as a way to make your vent hood more effective. Since that extra six inches covers a greater area, cooking contaminants are captured more easily. In many instances, this could allow your blower fan to adequately exhaust air at a lower quieter setting. Number two, get an exhaust hood with variable speed controls. That way, you can crank up the blower fan to high for a few minutes when the air in the kitchen is the hottest and smokiest. Then you can turn the fan back down to a lower, less noisy level. A minimum of two speeds is recommended. The high speed setting can be used with serious cooking, and the low quiet setting can be used after you've finished most of the cooking. You can continue to ventilate the kitchen on low while you're eating. Be wary of paying more for lots of settings. Any more than three speeds is more than most people will ever use. Number three, choose a vent hood blower with a quieter noise rating. This seems like a no-brainer, I know, but many people don't even realize vent hoods have noise ratings. The measurement of loudness that's most often used with vent hoods is SONES, S-O-N-E-S. To avoid a loud hood, look for the lowest SONES you can find for the power of hood you need. Some less expensive hoods may not have a noise rating listed, but many quality manufacturers list the SONES. As a point of reference, the noise of a modern, quiet refrigerator is roughly one SONE, 
A whisper is also one sound. A quiet vent hood fan set on low typically comes in at one sound or lower, but high speeds can make sounds jump to 10 or more. A quiet vent hood on high will have a rating of six to seven sounds, which is roughly 65 decibels. This is the same noise level of a conversation that you'd have in a full conference room or busy restaurant with background noise. So if you find an exhaust fan that is at six or fewer sounds on high, you'll be able to talk over the exhaust fan. Typically, sounds are measured at maximum hood speed. So for example, when buying a vent hood that runs at six sounds, six is the maximum noise level that the range hood will ever produce. The hood will be quieter at lower settings. Remember that your hood won't be running on high all the time. Usually, it will only run on the loudest maximum speed for a few minutes when you have a lot of smoke or heat that needs to be cleared out fast. Also realize that an exhaust hood may only be able to achieve six zones or fewer on a high speed with either a remote inline or a remote external blower, which brings me to the next tip. Number four, request a remote inline or external blower. Remote meaning the blower is outside of the vent hood itself. A remote inline blower or remote external blower are the best options to reduce the sound level of your range hood. Remember the blower is the heart of the range hood. It's the mechanism that sucks stale cooking air out of the kitchen. So for a quiet vent hood, you want to either choose an inline blower or an external blower. Okay, Pop quiz. Can you recall from the last episode the difference between an inline and an external blower? Well, their names are based on where the blowers are located. An inline blower is outside of the hood, but inside of the house, along the duct line, often in an attic. An external blower is located outside or on the exterior of the house, usually on the roof or on an outdoor wall. Both the inline and external blowers are located away from the kitchen, installed completely separately from the range hood. Because of that, they can drastically reduce the sound level of the vent hood. Internal blowers are installed inside of the hood itself and are, as you can imagine, the loudest option. They're also the least expensive option. Remote inline and external blowers are more expensive. But if you spend a lot of time in and around the kitchen, they're totally worth the money. An external blower is usually the most expensive option since it will require a weatherproof enclosure. Number five, choose a silencer. Residential kitchen ventilation will require the use of heat tolerant steel or aluminum ducting to lead smoke, heat and fumes from the kitchen range hood to the outdoors. Metal ducts can be loud so a silencer is recommended to decrease some of the noise produced by the ducts. A significant portion of the overall noise of the range hood comes from the sound of the turbulence and the ducts as the blower is compressing air into a smaller duct space. A silencer, also called a duct attenuator, acts sort of like a car muffler and muffles sounds coming from the exhaust system. By installing a sound-insulating silencer, Exhaust noise can be lowered by an additional 25 to 50 percent. When attached to a remote inline or external blower, a silencer can reduce the sound traveling through the duct line. Number six, select baffle filters instead of mesh filters. One of the main components of the vent hood is the filter. You'll have to choose either a baffle filter or a mesh filter. A good quality baffle filter will typically make less noise than a mesh filter. Both baffle and mesh filters trap grease and grime, but filtration through the small interconnecting mesh openings is louder than the filtration through the wider slit-like openings of a baffle filter. And because baffle filters are made with wider spaces, they don't need to be cleaned as regularly as mesh filters. Keep in mind, As mesh filters get dirtier, they become less efficient. Baffle filters work best at higher fan speeds, 
and are more common in more powerful vent hoods. Baffle filters are not only quieter, but they're also more expensive, and lots of people think they're prettier. Mesh filters work well regardless of the fan speed, but again, they're louder. There are new hybrid mesh baffle style filters that combine baffle and mesh features for the best of both worlds. Number seven, request wider ducts. Ducts direct stale air from the vent hood to the outdoors. And most vent hood manufacturers and experts say bigger ducts are better. When you're pushing air through a more narrow space, it can be noisier than pushing the same air through a wider space. So go for the widest ducts recommended by your hood manufacturer if you have the space. Ultimately, you'll want to follow the recommendations of the maker of your vent hood, but here are some general guidelines. If your vent hood is 400 to 600 CFM, choose at least 8-inch ducts. A 601 to 900 CFM fan should have 8 to 10-inch ducts. And a professional style range with 900 to 1200 CFM fans and a professional style range with a 901 to 1200 CFM fan requires a 10 to 12 inch duct. Most sources I read said to request at least a 10 inch diameter duct if you have the space, even if your HVAC guy is resistant because smaller ducts are easier to install. Ducts that are a little larger than required won't cause any significant problems, but ducts that are too small will be loud and less efficient. Another quick rule of thumb is to choose a duct that's at least the size of your blower. But a 10-inch duct, whenever possible, is what many professionals recommend. Number eight, decrease your duct length and turns. The longer and more convoluted your duct run, the louder your system will be. The duct's efficiency decreases with increased duct length, increased number of bends, and decreased duct width. Let me say that again. The duct's efficiency decreases with increased duct length, increased number of bends, and decreased duct width. A couple of 45 degree turns are okay. They're better than a 90-degree L-shaped turn for sure, but the straighter your ducts are, the better. Select a duct termination point on your roof or your outside wall to create the shortest possible duct path with the fewest turns. Best Range Hoods, which is a sister brand to Braun, suggests that we keep the length of our duct path less than 50 linear feet and that we use the fewest number of gradual 45-degree turns possible. And we should avoid 90-degree turns, if at all possible. If we have to make a 90-degree turn, we should always separate those 90-degree elbows or turns with at least two feet of straight ductwork. We should also aim for four or fewer of any kind of transition or turn. So four or fewer bends, elbows, turns, or transitions that make the duct path less straight. For the best airflow, use smooth galvanized metal ducting rather than flexible or corrugated ducting and seal joints with a duct joint mastic tape. Number nine, go for more CFMs. CFM stands for, do you remember? Cubic feet per minute. And it's the measure of the power of the vent hood. We talked last week about how many CFMs are appropriate for certain stoves and cooking habits. Well, although it sounds counterintuitive, getting a hood with more CFMs will allow you to have a quieter exhaust experience most of the time. Remember, a vent hood on high will be fairly noisy no matter what. So we want to avoid that loud high speed setting as much as possible. The more powerful the hood, the better the exhausting you'll achieve at a lower, quieter speed. In fact, at lower speeds, exhaust hoods can be as much as 50% quieter. Now, you don't want to go too overboard with increasing the number of CFMs, but that's mainly because it's more expensive and you might need to invest in a makeup air system. 
but choosing higher than recommended CFMs will allow your hood to suck up stale air more effectively at lower, quieter speeds. And number 10, invest in vent hood heat sensors. A heat sensor is a built-in extra on some models that monitors temperature changes, and many heat sensors will automatically turn on the exhaust fan and adjust to the appropriate speed. That means as soon as it's appropriate, the vent hood will ratchet down to a lower, quieter speed. Another helpful extra is an exhaust timer, also called a timer shutoff or delayed shutoff. It's not particularly helpful in making your vent hood quieter, but it's a convenient feature that turns off the fan after a set period of time of cooking, typically 10 to 15 minutes after you finished cooking. This feature shuts off the blower automatically, which is handy if you want to leave the fan running to take care of lingering odors. One last note before we do a couple of quiz questions. If you do a lot of cooking, you might want to look for an Energy Star hood. They have energy-efficient blower motors and lighting. They're also most often very quiet hoods. I'll tell you, though, that at the time of this podcast, it's much more difficult to find more powerful, high CFM vent hoods that are Energy Star certified. As you can imagine, larger, more powerful hoods can be less energy-efficient than smaller hoods. So if you're looking for a more powerful hood instead of Energy Star, Look for the Home Ventilation Institute certification label, the HVI label. It would be nice to find a very powerful, energy-efficient hood, but if you can't find an energy-efficient model that you like or that has the power that you need, remember that vent hoods are thankfully only used on high for a few minutes at a time. All right, before we go, let's do a couple of quiz questions. Number one, true or false, a downdraft hood is the most effective style of vent hood. That's false. According to Consumer Reports testing, downdraft hoods are among the least effective at removing cooking fumes. Downdraft hoods fit into the counter next to the cooktop and are usually used with island cooktops. Downdraft hoods are not the optimal choice for any kitchen, but they are especially bad if you're considering a gas range. If you have to use a downdraft hood, stick with an electric or induction stove. And number two, all of these things will make your vent hood quieter, except which one? A, straighter duct runs. B, a remote inline or external blower. C, a mesh filter. Or D, more CFMs. The answer is C. A mesh filter. A mesh filter is louder than a baffle filter. Both baffle and mesh filters trap grease and grime, but filtration through the small interconnecting mesh openings is louder than filtration through the wider slit-like openings of a baffle filter. The sound associated with range hoods is produced by the airflow into the hood, the blower, and the ducting necessary to exhaust air to the outside. To minimize sound, purchase a more powerful range hood with greater CFMs and with a hood size 6 inches wider than your stove, choose one with variable speeds and a sound rating of 6 or lower. Request a remote, inline or external blower, a silencer, and as a rule of thumb, 10 inch ducts installed in the shortest, straightest path possible and choose a baffle filter. Whoa, that was a lot of information. If you need to listen to the podcast again, have at it. You can do it for free as many times as you want. That's all I have for you. I hope you learned as much as I did. And I hope you'll join me next time for another episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. 
That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.